What's going on everybody, Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Today I want to take a closer look at the VoxLab Ares machine. I've had it a little bit over a week, I've been printing with it every single day, trying to get to know the machine a little bit better, but I can't get to know it uh, all that well without knowing what's powering it. So I'd like to take a look at the motherboard, the stepper drivers, check their voltages, check all the fans on the machine, what sizes they are, uh, things along those lines. I'd like to take a look at the hot end assembly, although I've seen it already, I'd like to show it to you because it is the same uh, type of system as it is on the Aquila X2 and the original Aquila, which means you can do small tweaks to, to the hot end to make it print uh, higher temperatures if that's something you're into with a machine like this. There's also built-in uh, tensioners for the belts that are underneath the top cover, so we'll go ahead and, and check those out first uh, and then move down the line. So let me get you in a little bit closer and get my tools and uh, let's get to know the machine a little bit better. Oh, oh, one more thing, one more thing before I forget Wi-Fi, let's talk about that. Um, over the past uh, week, there's been two firmware updates and they've come in through the Wi-Fi system on the machine. There is a little um, message that comes up asking you if you'd like to install the latest firmware, yes or no, and if you hit yes, you get the latest and greatest right there to your machine without having to look for it or check for it or installing it on the SD card, bringing it over that whole mess. So that's really cool, it's a really nice feature uh, for the printer the firmware uh, via Wi-Fi. And actually, speaking of that, the latest one that we just got uh, added a whole new functionality to the printer uh, where you can change uh, filament right uh, during a print. So if you come up to a print where you want to change your filament or you're running low and you'd like to manually change it, there is a button you can press uh, right on the machine that will allow you to do so. So that, that means that this printer is only going to get better with time as the company releases features and the fact that you can get them through Wi-Fi instead of checking for them constantly, making sure you're on the latest or hearing it from somebody and then digging around for it, it'll come directly to your printer. So that's a really neat feature. All right, that's all. Let's get uh, to uh, taking the machine apart. All right, now let's take a look at the tensioners uh, for the belts. So to remove this cover to get access to them, there are four 2.5 millimeter bolts uh, holding the cover down. Um, now, after you take them off, you might notice that the cover doesn't budge at all, and that's because it is also held down by really strong clips, and it can actually be pretty hard to take it off. That's why I wanna show you how it's done. All right, so once those are gone, what I like to do, and you can try to pry it up on the sides, but as you can see, it flexes a bit and nothing seems to happen. What I recommend doing is holding the uh, chassis itself here, and I kind of pull up and wiggle like that. And as you can see, it is fast and violent and loud, but it is really easy to do once it pops off once and you realize that all you have to do is kind of wiggle and pull upward. It does come off. Let me get you in a little bit closer so you can see how the system works. All right, so this is just one side, but it is mirrored and exactly the same on the opposite side, so that should be fine. But essentially, there is a pulley here and there is a bolt. This is the adjustment bolt. If you tighten this, this bolt, it pulls this pulley backward, tightening this belt. It's a really simple system. So if you loosen, uh, the pulley moves back and it will loosen the belt. So screw it in, tighten, uh, screw it out, loosen. Very simple, very easy to do. Just have to take a cover off and uh, then it's, uh, then it's cake. All right, it's the same on the other side. So that's how you tighten these two belts. Okay, so for the X axis of the machine, the way you adjust is a little bit different. There's no pulley system here. This one's a little bit more manual, but essentially, if you look at these uh, stepper uh, motor itself, you will see these little slots of how this thing attaches to the bracket. What you wanna do is you loosen all four uh, bolts on all sides and using your fingers, you push towards uh, this direction to the outside, creating tension on the belt itself. So while pushing on the motor that makes tension, use an Allen key to tighten all four of these and that will give you proper tension on your X axis. So no pulley like I mentioned, but a really easy to use system. And on my particular machine, mine did come with really good tension here. So you don't have to adjust this one, at least on mine, but definitely check yours. So now that you know how to tension the system, let's go ahead and move on to something else. All right, moving right along the hot end. To remove the hot end assembly, or at least the cover to it, there are two 2.5 millimeter uh, bolts uh, holding the cover on, and they're in the top right and top left hand corners. 
I'm gonna leave them both in there so I don't drop them. Uh, they're easy to take off, so just remove them, and then as you can see, the cover will just slide forward, and it's held on with two tabs on the bottom, so it kind of slots in that way. Easy to take off, and actually, uh, something interesting, if you look closer, uh, it resembles the machine itself. Nice little Easter egg from Vox Lab. So as you can see under here, we have a pretty standard uh, fan. Uh, let me try to get it out of the way for you. So this is a 40 millimeter fan with a really short plug because what you can't see in this angle is on top there is a little sister board where everything on here plugs into, making wire management actually really easy. Uh, didn't get it off enough. Let me go ahead and give it a few more spins. There we go, this side and this side, okay. Yep, so if I move this fan out of the way, actually, let me just go ahead and unplug it from the top. There we go, feed this wire through. All right, there's the standard fan. As you can see, the plugs are very short, and that's okay. So there you go, that is the hot end. As you can see, it is using the same exact hot end as the Aquila and the Aquila X2, which means you can line this with uh, higher temperature PTFE tubes, you can get a different um, heat break, you can get different nozzles, uh, very easy to upgrade as long as you keep the wiring short as far as your thermistor and your heater are concerned. As far as the fans, uh, 40 millimeter fans, this is a 410. Uh, this is also a 4x10, but not a blower style. So if you do want to upgrade these things, they are here and they are easy to do. I am finding that the cooling is perfectly fine though. Um, so you don't necessarily need to upgrade, but if something does go wrong, uh, here is the back of the fan. It is a 24 uh, volt fan, uh, brushless, uh, 0.09 amps. It looks like it's the Peerless Motors, the same uh, brand that was on the Aquila X2 specifically. So hopefully these last a little while. Here is also the LED. Uh, it's a very bright blue. I kind of wish it was white, but blue is okay. Um, and it, it just clips in here, it looks like, and it'll be, be pretty fun to see what it would be like to swap that out uh, at some point. But there you go, that's the hot end. And you know what, let me go handheld and show you guys the top of it, just so you get the full picture. Here we go, let's focus in on that little board. So here's what the top looks like, and actually on your stock machines, your PTFE coupler will be much taller and longer like my original one was, but I had to swap it out to a standard one. So good to know that standard ones do work uh, for this uh, hot end system. But as you can see, there's only one wire in uh, that goes into this board where everything breaks apart uh, into little manageable bits. And uh, let me see if I can get you guys in here, but this does say, uh, BL touch, I believe. Yep, BL touch right on the back there. So it is ready for um, a leveling system if that's something that you're interested in. But with such an easy uh, leveling uh, system already in place, I absolutely do not see a need um, for one of those here. All right, so that's the hot end assembly. Let's move right along. All right, so here's the bottom of the machine. If you're gonna do this, I highly recommend actually t uh, turning the power off. I'm gonna keep mine on. I'm taking that risk, so just keep that in mind. But to remove the cover, uh, it looks like there's just five uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, screws all around here, four corners and one silver one in the middle. I'm not sure why the distinction of color there, but we'll find out in a second. Uh, it is really nice to see all the ventilation uh, in the bottom here. Uh, which means it's not just um, you know breathing through some small uh, area. It is nice and open. I'm gonna go ahead and move these to the side over here. Uh, and let's see if I can take it off without that one. Nope, looks like this one needs to come off as well. Let's see. All right, now that's all five removed. If I can get my fingers under here, my fingernails that I don't have. Uh, let's pull it right up. There we go. I'm gonna go slow in case there's something mounted to it and there's not. All right, here are the electronics. Let me go ahead and give you a closer look. All 
All right, so here's what we're seeing underneath the cover. Uh, we have a motherboard here that has a fan directly next to it. It's not necessarily getting cold air, but it is blowing air on all these big heat sinks, which is nice uh, to know that they're at least getting some kind of cooling. This fan, however, does look like it's the older style fan, like on the original Aquilo, so this might be something to look out for. It is running a Meanwell power supply, which is always nice. It looks like uh, this stepper motor is actually the kind that has the lead screw going all the way through it instead of being a regular one with a coupler on it holding a screw so that's noteworthy both the screen and the motherboard say board version 1.03 it doesn't look like there's actually any way to add an SD card to the board so getting a different type of firmware on here might be uh, just a different way than we are used to with the Kila machines uh, but the chip on the main board is a Nation N32G452 and it does have the color uh, color coded uh, connectors kind of like the Aquila X2 did uh, so there you go. That's kind of the overlook of what's under here. It looks like it's nice and tidy. And I have my voltmeter here just to check out what the V-refs look like. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the negative on the negative on the power supply. And I'm going to touch the adjustment screws uh, on the Z first. Real careful. Looks like I'm reading 0.35 on the Z. Y, we have 1. X, we have 1 and AV, which I'm assuming is the extruder, we have 0.8. So 0.8 on AV, one on XV, one on YV, and 0.35 on um, ZV. So that's what they have going uh, out of the box. So that's something worth noting. And here's what's in here, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and throw the cover back on and I'll see you at the top. All right, so that's a closer look at the VoxLab Ares 3D printer. Let me know if there's something I missed. I actually looked back at the footage and I think I missed saying that this has a Meanwell power supply. We're all familiar with those power supplies, the same one that's in the VoxLab Aquila and the Aquila X2. So not much change there. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm going to save my main thoughts uh, for a proper review video. Uh, I don't feel like I've had the printer long enough to do a proper review, uh, but I'm sure you've heard my thoughts in all these videos so far. Just generally speaking, I am pretty happy with the machine. I think it sets, I think it does what it sets out to do, but I do see that there's some room for improvement, especially on the firmware side, that'll really make, make this thing uh, an absolute uh, killer printer. And I think it's easy to do as long as Vox Labs keeps pushing out these updates for the firmware. And uh, seeing the support that they give uh, for these machines is also uh, really refreshing. I think I mentioned that before in some other videos, uh, but that's just, uh, you know, I've seen some other companies not even reply. Uh, so it's definitely nice um, when somebody stands behind their product. All right, guys, uh, let me know in the comments if there's something that I missed or if there are some specific questions that you would like, uh, uh, you know, about this printer. Is there anything specific you'd like me to test or check out myself? Uh, let me know. All right, that's all for me. I'll see you guys in the comments.